All right, Jim. I'm ready. <laughs> you ready to be counted in? Yeah. Ready Do in it. Chamesh. Arba, Shalosh, Stein. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at? Christina P. Oh, no, no, meow, 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 meow. Watch me do stand up in Omaha, Nebraska at the Funny Bone. June 3rd through June 6th. Then the show goes to Salt Lake City. I'm doing Wise Guys Comedy Club. I've added shows on Thursday. Get those now. San Antonio, July 15th through 17th. Laugh out loud. LOL. <laughs> July 22nd through 24th. Liberty Township, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio in August, Oklahoma City at the Bricktown Comedy Club in September, Indianapolis Tits, and then Denver, Colorado at the Comedy Works, Raleigh, North Carolina at Charlie Goodnights, Orlando, Florida, November, the week of uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, did you hear my K at the end of that? I hear that K. Ah, ChristinaPOnline.com for tickets. Oh, Shady Rays. We are supported by Shady Rays. I love Shady Rays. High quality shades for so much less than expensive brands. Shady Rays are a staple in our home. We love them. We keep them out by the pool. You know why? Because they last. You can put Shady Rays by the pool. I go, I pick them up and they're just as great as the the moment they arrived. They're one of the best warranties in the sunglasses industry. Replacements if lost or broken and lifetime craftsmanship warranty plus 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order. Isn't that so, so wonderful? Yeah, it's got such, what other company has a warranty like that? And they still manage to make quality that I can tell. You know, when you hold them in your hand, you know that they're durable. And they only, they start at just $48. Change the way you wear sunglasses and give Shady Rays a risk-free shot. We think you're going to love them. And if they're not for you, you can return them for free anyways. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is running their deepest deal of the season. Use code MOMS for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You can get two pairs for $48. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find all their newest and best shades. Sattva Mattress Company. You've heard me talk about them forever. I sleep on a Sattva luxury mattress. I sleep on the Solaire because I like to go up, down. I like vibrations. I like light under my bed. So when I get up to take a pish in the middle of the night, I don't stumble over things. Uh, we've slept on the Lumen Leaf, which is their memory foam mattress. And I love Sattva because you can get an enormous king size mattress without the king size price. Hey, oh. And delivery is amazing. Their service is impeccable. You cannot go wrong. Now, because we love Sattva and they love us, there's a URL, sattva.com slash the shit. Go there, get $200 off your next Sattva purchase. What is that? S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit gets you $200 off your next Sattva sattva mattress do yourself a favor do it get it now thank you um what about you homie are you touring or what are you promoting not yet i go in the fall i'll go out in the fall in september my date start good for you uh ryansickler.com you know subscribe to my youtube channel i think you mean prescribe yes prescribe i'm sorry everybody prescribe to my podcast let uh, me tell the you, honey if you the honeydew you know, now subs- prescribe to my youtube pres- prescribe to the youtube get a pres- you know make sure you get a you can get a yearly prescription <laughs> on my uh patreon and Put save that down. money yeah a yearly prescription to patreon to patreon and what can people get on your patreon you get now you get uh a full episode of the honeydew with y'all where i talk to everyone else out there and the stories that i'm telling you that shit that's coming out of that podcast is amazing i know it's insane. Like we think we're fucked up. Those are people that have great stories and have battled trauma. They just don't get up in front of people and laugh about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they just yeah. deal with it like normal people. Like, yeah, no, I don't want to get up in front of thousands of people nightly and make them laugh about the shit I went through. I just want to deal with it and tell you. But um, but don't but don't you find that there's something? It's the way I look at um, like war vets. You ever talk to a war vet and you try to get them to talk about stuff that they've seen? And they're like, nah, dude, you're not in the club. Like yeah. until you've 
had that same shit happen. That's right. Until you've been in the trenches. You can't validate it. You can't. No. And so that's what I love about your show, The Honeydew, for those of us that are like, yeah, dude, I've seen some shit. I've, I've been in the trenches. Here's a show. Not only have I seen some, I've seen so much of it that at some point I finally had to laugh about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's a percentage where you go, okay. I mean, that's kind of funny. You died like that? Okay. You're just going to leave us here like that all alone and no parents? All right. <laughs> well, and I but will you also say. But you also get the regular honeydew on my Patreon just to finish your question oh, sorry. real quick. Yes, for free. Okay. Ad free a day early, all at the same price. Five well, bucks a month for the rest of 2021. Now, isn't ad free just fantastic for yes. five dollars? That's great. You have to turn. Take you got to open these. <laughs> five bucks, you get a full episode, and I'm not doing some 20, 30 minute extra content bullshit. I'm doing an hour plus with with you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you or someone you know out there has that fucking story that you're like, this needs to be heard. You don't need to be a member of Patreon, anything. Just submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com and we'll vet I it. And hopefully it. get to do an episode with you. And let me tell you, first of all, there's more. Uh, hold on, I, I just have to write. There's so many things. I, I love want that you to write. You. I have I to, otherwise it just goes out of my head. Uh, so, you know, I found that so many people, especially people that are into Studio Jeans shows have these pasts and share these traumas because now I do live shows again and I talk about like how much I hated growing up in my house and people are like yeah and for me it's so cathartic and helpful to go like oh I'm not the only one who's deeply ashamed uh, also at time you know it's not like it's not like when you grow up with all that stuff you're stoked to share about it it takes a process of like getting over the shame of that and then well, first, it takes the process of realizing, like, it hits you first, like, oh, this isn't normal. That's a huge one. That's that the took big, a while. right? <laughs> then, after you realize that that shit's not normal, you start craving the shit that's yeah. that that you think is normal. So you're going after that. Then, once you live in that a little bit, you start having to deal with the shit that wasn't normal because it creeps in your every goddamn day life in the normal yeah. and makes shit abnormal. Yeah, you know, you're always dealing with it. Yes. And then once you finally get to that point, you're like, all right, I've got a handle on this. 25 year old me has a handle on this, but then 30 year old you is not 25 year old. You got some new bullshit to deal with at 30. <laughs> you know, I had to self check myself today. I really did. I wonder why I'm trying my ass off to be a better to myself also, not just a better person, but to me also. And like, there are nights where I'll look in the mirror, I'll be like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, like, call myself out of my bullshit. I'm like, yeah. get your exercise, eat better. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know, you didn't do shit today. <laughs> Drink some goddamn water. I find myself doing that more than I ever find myself looking in the mirror going, hey, you got a good one today. Yeah. Keep that. I'm trying to do that more and more. So today I had this moment of <laughs> just being a little bitch by myself, like, mm, you know, feeling a certain way about whatever, <laughs> honestly, whatever. And then I was like, what are you fucking bitching about? You're getting to go see Christina today. You're getting to do a podcast. It's our last one with you as a I California know. resident. As a resident, but we'll be back a lot because our studio is nowhere right. near ready. <laughs> but you're going to have a Texas driver's license. I know. And uh, we go back to way, way back. And I was like, you're healthy today. You got nothing to That's fucking right. worry about. Live it today. And I'm, so I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm proud of myself that I'm able to self-check myself. But I need to do it more where I'm doing the positive in the mirror instead of the get your shit together. Yeah. You know, because talk, yeah. if you really look back at it, I thought about this coming here, like 16 year old me, 22 year old me would have been like, bro, we we done been here. Like you're 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 future tripping over shit that hasn't happened. We've lived it. it. It's not as bad as you think it is. Like settle the fuck down. We can handle it. We're good. You did this 25 years ago. We're good. And then I felt better coming here and. Jammed out to NWA and David Bowie on my way to your you, show. You today. worked it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so interesting. And I'll probably smoke a lot of weed after this, Christina. Yeah, yeah, of course. We don't <laughs> have to. Well, I think this pandy definitely has put things in focus real quick. Like, I, I don't expend as much energy in places that don't benefit my family or myself. Amen. I say no to a lot of stuff now. Yep. I just really realize that nothing is certain. You can plan as much as you want. So you better enjoy like what you're saying. Like every day I get to, I get to look in the mirror. Every day I get to look in the mirror. I'm not wheeling up to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I'm in a good place. You know what I'm saying? I'm walking up to that mirror. Right. I got two hands to run through my hair. I have hair. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still here. My dad's dead six years ago. I'm still fucking here. Yeah. So you got to check yourself for sure. Yeah. And and then the little pleasures of just watching your children be happy and carefree. And you go, I did it. I did it. Like, so my, my my therapist and I discussed generational trauma which she says takes three generations to work out. What one are we in? Okay, so <laughs> that's the problem. You only live one of these generations. Am I so, one, am I two, or am I three? Well, you know, where am I? It's likely the third one that starts the process of... So our kids are going to be beginning... So our grandkids yes. should be healthy, hopefully. They, your kids will have issues, but not as horrendous as the issues you and I faced. Right. They won't... Their issues will be like... Already, my daughter's not facing that. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Like, never. when I was this age, so let's say Ellis is my older boy, at five, let's see, I'd already moved to another country. I was born in Canada. We moved to America. My parents had already divorced. My mother was severely mentally ill. And my dad lived alone and was starting to bang hussies in an apartment. And I remember going to 7-Eleven every day for By him yourself? to get his beer. No, I just walk with him to 7-Eleven and he'd get ripped. And then I would get to get like a fake Barbie. Like, do you know 7-Eleven toys are not real toys? And I'd be like, this Barbie's not real. I don't care. Like that was my Dad, pie. who's Darby? <laughs> <laughs> Darby! <laughs> And if you grew up with a fucked up parent, you know who you the had a bunch of Darby yeah. is. Because her plastic was soft as fuck and she was yeah. she like whistle like, <laughs> like you could push her. <laughs> Fucking Darby. Yeah, the fact that I even knew the different liquor stores in the valley. Like I can tell you the best ones in the San Fernando <laughs> yeah. Valley. You were you a big circus liquor person? Circus. <laughs> That's in Northridge. Yeah. This is Northridge. We did not live there. I lived in Canoga Park. Uh, time to buy on Newcastle and Ventura. That's one a good of my one. favorite ones. Time, to, time buy. to buy. That's great. That's great. <laughs> but actually led me to reading Cracked Magazine and Mad Magazine because they were available in liquor stores. Not, I mean, in front of the pornography it's funny that you was say, covered. I just had a yeah. guy on my Patreon that still writes for Cracked. No it's way. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so actually that being being exposed to the, quote, seedier elements is what made me interested in comedy mm-hmm. and that nightlife and like, what are adults, do? what the, f- you know. So Yeah, like these people are smoking in yeah. this place in here and gambling over there. And I used to love going into liquor. Well, because in Baltimore, it's a, a liquor <laughs> store or in Maryland, it's everything. You don't get alcohol at Target or the wait, grocery store wait, what? in Maryland. What no. Do you mean? It's like no California is not normal. It's not like everywhere else. You don't go into the regular grocery what? store in Maryland and buy liquor. Oh no, I'm sorry, you're right. Yes, I know what in you're talking about. Like in New store. Jersey or Target. You yeah. don't you don't get that. You have to go to a liquor you gotta store. You got to go to a liquor store. In, yeah. in Pennsylvania it's called Case and Keg. They can only sell beer in a Case and Keg and then everything else is in a liquor store. But in Maryland you would get a liquor store, but my favorite was you can go into the back room where they open it up and that's where they keep all the cases of beer in the cold, cold freezer back mm-hmm. there. And I just still love to be able to go. It just, it's special. I remember taking friends like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, this is where you got to go get the beer here. This is how it's done here. Yeah, yeah, it's a special room. <laughs> There's a guy in there freezing, like selling you weed or something. Like, how much you need? <laughs> <laughs> right. So what was your five like? Well, at five, I'd already been told that um, I I was hated. um, By whom? (laughs) My mom. (laughs) (laughs) You think I was going to say the neighborhood kids or something? Or my brother? (laughs) Oh, my mom, naturally. The woman who gave birth to me. I'm a year into being hated uh, at five years old. Oh, so wait. So she starts hating you at four. That's what she said. Yeah. What? she said she told a friend of mine uh her his mom that and and then she told me that later yeah. why do you think four was the age i really don't know we've talked about this and i don't know what it was about me you it's know i've always you. wondered if she wanted a daughter well it's not i've learned that yeah. later but i always wondered if she wanted a daughter but also i'm a twin you know and i don't oh. think they were expecting to have a second one so maybe i'm resented because there's two of them right away and it wasn't supposed to be that. Who knows? It's not. You know what I've learned too. It's not. It's not for, it's not for me to out. fucking figure out. Well, what's interesting is that for me, it's the opposite. So four, I didn't, I didn't hate my kids, but to, until then. But at four, I went, oh, this is the good stuff. This is the really fun shit. Like when they start having opinions, and you can be like, "Come on, dude, let's go fucking do this." And there's no diapers, and mm-hmm. so it's interesting. Maybe was your mom a borderline too, or just a borderline. narcissist? <laughs> 
Feels like I'm going to lose my mind. You just keep on pushing my love over the borderline. Borderline. I'm not sure. She didn't go to therapy keep work or something. <laughs> she, I don't know. she didn't go there. Keep they never pushing me. Sorry. Keep pushing my love. You Come on. <laughs> Oh, you're at the end. Sorry. Come on, I darling. loved that one. Oh, and that's a good one. I'm going to listen groove. to that on the, as oh. soon as we leave here. I'm bumping borderline and get on the into way out the here. Groove. This Madonna where she puts her <laughs> armpits up on. That's oh, the Madonna I love. Shit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking what I'm, my theory might be, if you're interested. I, I would love know. to hear theories. There's a there's a theory like with borderline moms, because my mother too has this thing of like, you were sweet until you were 13 and then you turned into a fucking bitch and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to say to your child oh, she used to say to me i love you but i do not like you and i'm like kids don't understand that distinction yeah i don't know i don't understand that now no it's stupid yeah. it's a stupid fucking thing to it's say to nothing, me nothing yeah so the point is is that my mother enjoyed me when i was thoroughly dependent an infant is thoroughly dependent and sure. controllable by four, you have an identity and you have a say and you can be like, go fuck yourself. I'm going to run away from you and defy you. So I don't know, at least with my mom, I know that was my, the differentiation, the individuation process, some others don't like, because it means they're not, they're not enmeshed with the mom. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like it's an identity thing. It's pretty crazy. I, I, I remember vividly telling my mother, this was the summer between fifth and sixth grade. Coincidentally, the same summer I discovered masturbation. Oh, that summer. wow. What a neat summer. I remember. How being old at, were you? Whatever is between fifth and sixth. So what, six. I just that talked about right. this with Dr. Drew. Six, 11 or 12, seven, maybe? Eight, 11? Nine, between 10 and 11. I'm 11. I'm 11. Probably now, 11. were you ejaculating fluid or yeah. it was just, wow. Yeah, a little fluid came out. Wow, at 10. <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. a, that's young. It was very young, but I I told him I didn't know what I was doing. I was just touching my body, not talking anything, and all of a sudden something happened. Oh, and wow. then every night we made that fucking shit out. I was like, I'll get to bed, I'll get to bed. <laughs> I just was talking about this the other day. I, so going back to we're jumping all over, but going yeah. back to us from the beginning, like yes. what the the one thing I, I love about you and Tom so much. First of all, and I want to thank you too because you guys have done so much for me professionally, personally. You know you have. And I will never, I'll be in debt to you forever. Well, well, hold on. Let me return the love. Now, you have grown so much since I have known you. And Tom and I were just talking. I'm going to start crying. We're so proud of you, Ryan. You're going to make me cry. Yeah. You haven't called me an angry dog in a long time. You're not time. an angry, <laughs> angry dog anymore. You are an evolved daddy dog. Don't in your cry, business, your podcast, we are just... I'm, we're just like in all of you. And I just want you to know that we see you. I'm crying, you fucker. I'm in all of you guys. Look, man, listen, I know people don't want to sit here and listen to us suck each other's nuts, but we're yeah. going to because you guys are game changers. Everything you're doing, listen, your pay-per-views, okay, you're, you're going to, all of it, you've broke the code. You don't have Ooh. to sit in a makeup fucking chair. <laughs> You don't have to listen to these bullshit executives who have 401ks and paid yeah, sick and vacation yeah. days and holiday. You don't have to listen to who've never stepped in the fucking arena, who've never put the fucking shoes on, who've never done any of it. You don't have to take bullshit notes. You don't have to do anything. You broke the code. Oh God. You can just work for yourself. And you guys, what I, the other thing I really love too is I tell Tom this when we were on the tour. I'm like, you guys have a modern day family. This is a family business. It's not some brick and mortar restaurant or whatever. It's a modern day family business. And I love that most about YMH. Yeah. You know, you guys have built that up from nothing into this Crazy. fucking empire. And there was no way I was going to have an opportunity from you two and hang a shower curtain behind me. Like, I don't want to let you down. You know what I mean? That's a big part of my motivation. <laughs> You've done more for me than oh. family has. I mean, you're <laughs> listening to the goddamn episode, Christina. A hug is, a, I mean, I that's like, oh my God, I think Christina must like me and think I'm nice. She hugged me. <laughs> yeah, we go back. So hugs are appreciated. Uh, but the other day, finally, because of you and also believing in myself and putting the work in, I went fucking fishing the other day on a fucking Wednesday. I just went out and fished, took a little shroom, smoked a joint and fucking fished. Good for you. That's what I did on my day off. 
Good for you. So we're able to do that shit now. Yeah. I mean, we're almost, I'm almost 50 hey. but, or 63, whatever Tom <laughs> wants to call me. But uh, I got there and now I got to figure out how to keep it there. You yeah. Because there's nothing fucking it. better than that. But you nothing guys are a family better. business. You're we a are. modern day family business. YMH. You know, I was trying to articulate that on your mom's house. Like, uh, maybe that's part of the reason I think we are we good at what we're doing is because it's always rooted in that. And like keeping Tom and myself and these knuckleheads in the booth together and all of us just like, it's about that, right? It's about just like sticking it to the man. It is. <laughs> and loving each other and loving the process and like wanting to give something good to humanity and not just be like, what about me, my career, my, my, it's so gross. Yeah. Anyway, I, and, and so, so is show business. Show business is so fucking gross like getting approval like will they pick me from, but and look who we're wanting Ugh. approval from people who in our business who've been accused of fucking kids like that's why <laughs> that's why i want approval from i want approval from you didn't you get accused of fucking kids i want your yeah. approval weinstein oh you can moonwalk <laughs> but don't you fuck kids you know what i mean like i'll tell you what i love about this younger generation when it comes to someone like michael jackson I is know. we look at god. michael jackson like this fucking you know this music god yeah these kids are like isn't that the guy that fucked kids like they don't even <laughs> know that part and i love that about them because i'm like yeah that's the guy that fucked those kids yeah that's him that's what? the guy I'm, I, I, I'm supposed to go to church and get your fucking approval and your fucking kids like what do we why do i want any one of these people's <laughs> approval i don't want your approval i want to go fish i want to smoke my weed i want to be a really good dad i want to make people feel I good i want to help them i want to laugh and that's all the fuck i want to do i just want to be the same asshole in a different tax same. bracket <laughs> and that's all i want that is so true because like the only good, the best thing about having money is to not think about money. That's it. That's really the only reason. And not to be told what the fuck to do, really. Well, also being this age and Ugh. realizing that it's not about jobs. It's about revenue streams. Yeah. That's different. It's That's different. different than working jobs. Figure out, how to make, figure out different ways to make money for yourself, no matter what field you're in. If I'm good at this, let's create this. Maybe a website generates money for you. Right, because it's Maybe a an eBay store generates now, yeah. money. Yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Create revenue streams for yourself. Don't work uh, smarter, not harder. Yeah. Go out and create ways that can funnel money to you with what you're already doing. Yeah, and the internet, it's really the internet that's created no this freedom for, especially moms like who are staying at home and maybe they're part-time working or whatever. You can start a fucking business in your living room and maintain it. But what I was gonna say about Michael Jackson is yes, he molested kids, but thriller slaps. <laughs> slaps balls on these kids' asses, Slaps balls girl. and kids' Come asses. On. And I don't know I if I can- I can't listen to it. I can't really? listen. Really? No, I won't listen to Arkell, no. It, cause it, because here's the problem. I mean, I can't Because stop. it I, does I, slap. It does. It's a good music. <laughs> I, you can't argue the fact that yeah. Quincy Jones Quincy has produced Jones. music. Quincy Jones. I love Quincy Jones. But I can't, People are like, you got to separate the artist yeah. from the, yeah, but not when it involves fucking kids. Like if it's your, you, you were a bank Allegedly, robber or something. Brian, oh, yeah, all right, all right. I'm Alleg trying to block it out. I know. I'm trying. now. So are they, Christine. I know, I know, so are they. I know. I'm trying <laughs> so to. So are they. Now, <clears throat> Cosby, that's a tough, that's a tough one. Cause you're like, we have, you know, that one, that one you can't listen to the stand up and be like, isn't that cute that he's talking about? Dropping Spanish pills fly and, yeah. and shit. Yeah. Like, oh boy. And now I'm looking at Fat Albert and be like, how many guys did he fucking rape? You know what I mean? Like oh, this God. guy, the cartoon oh, guy, oh, the God. dad, America's dad. Yeah. Out there raping people. Serial rapist. It's like, it's like the world. And pointing so fingers at Pryor and Murphy for the language they use. Get the fuck out of that's here. That's the hypocrisy. I hate that shit so much. Of like, why aren't you? You should be this person. You should be that person. It's like, yeah, but what are you? And right. how are you pointing? But that's what bothers me about cancel stuff. Is like, well, have you never said anything irresponsible or stupid ever? All the fucking time. Every minute of every day, I'm saying dumb shit. Ugh, I love my lawn again. I've hated it for, oh gosh, since I've had dogs basically, because my dogs love to go and pee all over my lawn. And now I, I had splotches, I had 
just bald spots, weeds until Sunday, Sunday lawn care. It is so easy. You go online, you put in your home address and their free lawn analysis tool takes care of the rest in just seconds. And the best part is Sunday uses soil and climate data to create a tailored nutrient plan. So you get all the stuff your lawn needs and nothing it doesn't. Sunday is made with ingredients that you can actually pronounce like seaweed, iron, molasses, so you can grow better and feel better better about it. Let Sunday take the guesswork out of growing a greener and more beautiful lawn this spring. Visit GetSunday.com slash WMMA to get $20 off your custom lawn plan at checkout. That's $20 off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash WMMA. We are supported by Harper Wild, my new favorite bra. One thing I'm bringing with me as things slowly approach normal life is comfort. I know I can still be comfortable in a bra thanks to Harper Wild. Now, I tried their sports bra and I am absolutely in love with their sports bra. It's so easy to put on, you know, when they're too tight and you have to put them over your tatas. It's just a nightmare. But Harper Wild, their sports bras are so comfortable and everything else, by the way. Um, Their collection of quality basics includes the base, a lightly lined everyday bra in a range of nudes that won't show through your shirt, the bliss and the bralette that provides lift while feeling like a second skin. I got to tell you, I have the bralette from them as well. I cannot wait when I get home, I take off my bra and I put on their bralette. Take their quiz and they have bundles, free returns. It's just fantastic. Stay in your comfort zone. Go to harperwild.com slash WMMA today so you can get 20% off your first purchase because the only thing better than a comfortable bra is getting a discount just for being a Where My Mom's At listener. That's 20% off at harperwild.com slash WMMA. harperwild.com slash WMMA. H-A-R-P-E-R-W-I-L-D-E dot com slash W-M-M-A. I'm, um, so I'm working now with, um, uh, with Lana at the Santa Monica Center. I work with Outreach Through the Arts. It's a, uh, yes, give back program. Yeah, tell people about it. It's a great program. Yeah, it's a give back program for at-risk youth. And we're working in conjunction with the Santa Monica Police Department and open up dialogue. And she teach, she gives them scholarships. And what it is, is. For kids that can't go to college or afford college or at this point in time don't want to see the the fact that this is some bullshit and I'm going to have a six figure fucking debt for a piece of paper that's probably not going to help me in today's world anymore. So instead of that, we give them scholarships where they can come in and she teaches them things like DJing so you can get yourself through college at a good rate and not have to. But I was like, why don't we podcast? Why don't we teach these kids how to podcast? These things have grown from us sitting in our apartments to television shows and guys like Nadav and your crew here at YMH, they're only continuing to grow. And I also want to say this about comedians. Comedians did this. Yeah. Not actors, not musicians, not athletes. Comedians turned these things into fucking 100%. where they are now. And everyone else is jumping on board. But comics were there at the beginning of this shit. And to let do me this. tell you, and let me tell you, Ryan. Because we're fucked up and we need to be heard. I don't dunk a ball. <laughs> I don't dunk a ball. I got dunked on. Okay, I got dunked. Well, out. let me tell you, because stand up is of not of the streets, but we are of we are. We're these maniacs who go out and perform on fucking subways and street corners. Bowling and, alleys, yeah, and laundromats. Yes. We are not glamorous. We're punk rock and we're the DIY of show business. We've always been seen as the lowest rung of show no business. No union, no protection, no, no nothing for us. Never. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's so much in our ethic. Like when Rogan was starting all of this stuff and he's like, you guys should do a podcast. And I was like, what's that? What do you mean? We can just say what we want. We can just do our own show. It was so fucking exciting. And to not be given notes, like you said, like, oh, it's the most successful thing I've ever done in my life because I haven't taken a note from anyone. Oh, my God. What a fuck your notes. A a fucking guys with um, MBAs telling you what's funny. Unreal. Let's do some stuff. How is your parenting? So Stella is how old? <laughs> uh, Let's check in. Let's see what's going on. She's six and a half now. What a cute age, man. She's great. Six and a half. We're getting a dog. We're, I no. told her we could get a dog. Yeah, we've been wanting a dog. So that's next. What kind of dog? We're getting a, I don't know if I say it right. It's either King Cavalier Spaniel or Cavalier King Spaniel. I'm not sure which but it is. Look it up. These They're are good so little super cute family cute. dogs. And for all of you out there that are going to tell us the rescue, we did. Yeah, there they are. Oh my God. They're super cute. So They're great family f- dogs. Cute. I found a great lady that's a really um, um, look at that responsible breeder. Dog. 
But we went to go rescue mm -hmm. during the pandemic mm -hmm. and this lady came sprinting out at us. You can't come in, you can't. I'm like, all right, what are your rules? You know, we're all masked up and everything. She's like, okay, go on the website, look at the available dogs, pick your top five. And I was like, five? Five. She's like, well, one might be taken, one could have behavioral problems, one could have health problems. I'm like, listen, lady, we're here to take the one we want. I'm not taking my number five rescue choice that's half pit that's gonna tear my face <laughs> off in the middle of the fucking night. So we'll, we'll go the other route right, and take the one we want. Then. Right, because it's so specific. A dog is not like no, a chair. You want to meet your dog yeah. and, you know. <laughs> you really have to make sure it's a temperament match. Yes. Um, a, a, an athletic match for your family. There's so many things to consider. So good for you. But at least you looked into well, it. Of course we looked into it. But apparently during the pandemic, everyone, everyone got, got dogs. dogs. Good. I hope yeah. they're still taking care yeah, of them. I know. That's what I worry about. All that's... the people are like, never mind. It's shit's over. July, I'm vaccinated. See you, Sparky. Yeah, it's out there in the road. <laughs> By the way, that's 100% what is fucking happening. Of course it is. It's like, remember those fads when like the Taco Bell Chihuahua was popular? Every asshole got a Chihuahua mm -hmm. and then there's there was a Chihuahua problem. Just running the streets <laughs> like deer. You know, they're just out in the woods <laughs> like deer. Because <laughs> people are fucking lazy. They don't want to, oh, I have to take care of this thing beyond the pandemic. What? So, um, okay, so that's good. Here's the thing though, I've learned with puppies and rescues. They're both awesome in different reasons. I've had rescues before too. They're I've had them great, all. Yeah. yeah, I love them all. Puppies have their all. own issues. It's like having a newborn, right? You have to train them. And then, mm -hmm. but then they have no behavioral issues because you've raised them since infancy, not like us. And they can't have, talk back. They can't talk. That's the thing. <laughs> that's, the, what the, our, that's when our parents didn't like us when we could start talking oh, back. Oh, are you, are you serious? Yeah, like, oh, you don't think like me? Oh, I hate you. I mean, I like you. Oh, no, I, I love you. I love you, but, but I, I don't like you. like you right now. <sighs> when I think about that, how my parents took normal behavior as an affront to them personally you know like remember breaking something in your house was there no greater terror terror than i can't believe it yeah we would glue it yeah leave it sit and be like god get away from it and then if anyone ever bumped it and touched it it was the tommy boy shit like what'd you do you know that way it's like Woo! no you knocked that off there's no glue on that there's, there's the glue all over the side they're like nah this was already broken well and i'm such a dummy mm -hmm. i was an only child so i thought i could get away with gluing it <laughs> nobody's like, coming nobody. over <laughs> my dad's like did you break this i'm like no he's like come on you're the only one in the house breaking shit i'm like oh yeah yeah i also remember too just like there's never fucking food in my dad's house like like just hot dogs cheerios grilled cheese i remember one time i learned how to make spaghetti bolognese at school and I was like, Dad, look, you can make spaghetti bolognese. And he was like, this is great. She's cooking for me. Like, he was stoked that I was cooking for us. He's like, you keep this up. You're a good woman. I'm like, oh, my God. That's so disrespectful. That is so disrespectful. So bad. Yeah. What did your dad feed you? Was he good at that stuff? Well, our dad was a single dad, so he yeah, was gone same. a lot. So oh. uh, I remember more than i mean you know we have food around when he was there but more i remember what we didn't have when mm. he died and we had to live with my mom and we were in that apartment by ourselves i don't know how much of this i've repeated on your show but this was the menu pretty much it was cold cuts it was ham and cheese yeah, yeah, yeah. uh we had martin's potato rolls uh we had doritos i don't even think cool ranch existed back say. in the 90s uh, or the early late 80s because when that shit came around my life had changed mm -hmm. cool maybe ranch. it did maybe it did but i don't remember it but it was always not the regular doritos and then we would always have like eight bucks each and we would either get mcdonald's or pizza like Ooh. this place called american pizza was like hey ryan like that <laughs> like it was every day every day they were always bringing a pizza to us you know what's funny and is that it was about and kool-aid and yeah. a lot of kool-aid Kool and soda and How soda cactus cooler fast food no it was always just the regulars coke sprite yeah uh dr pepper you know what's interesting is that you can always tell somebody's childhood based on the foods they grew up with and then what they'll still eat today like i discussed french bread pizzas on this show yeah stovers yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who didn't know him? Who didn't know well, him? Well, ask Tom. Like, if you were to ask my husband, hey, you know what a French bread pizza is? No. My mom cooked for us every day. You know what I mean? Like, people. We that... had it in our school. It was called Pizza Boat Day. Oh. If instead of the rectangle square I on love Friday, the square. there'd be like a random Tuesday, you get Pizza Boat. You know, they're just taking all their old. Now you realize they're just taking all that old stale bread that they had left over and threw some sauce and cheese on. Wait, but what's the square pizza that they. Why that is it that universal? Rectangle. I know, yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> it was always pizza, it was corn, 
and it was like uh you know fruit <laughs> cup or some other bullshit a soft pretzel every now and then you could get you know no 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 remember the canned fruit the shout out to nikia she brought this one up to me the mixed can of fruit and then the pink cherry in there oh i, I like, do remember <laughs> i do remember that 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 lid that'll slice your finger fucking open <laughs> <laughs> cutting kids so all over good. elementary school <laughs> you know what we had one year in elementary school this is fucking it was one year or two because they realized it was a mistake and it was right about the time that like the capri sun started Ooh. coming out and shit but instead of the little milk cartons they gave us these milk bags oh fuck it was off. in a bag like european style like a, like a plastic bag Ugh. filled up and you took a, a pointed yeah. straw like a capri sun you yeah. put it in and as yeah. soon as all these kids, uh, we would just turn. Uh, yeah, like in fucking Arab yeah, world are, and there shit. There yeah. That's what they gave us. That's exactly what they gave us. It would just be brown or white milk and the shit. And then we would turn to each other and squeeze that motherfucker. <laughs> that was one year they did that. They're like, done. You can't squeeze a milk carton at somebody like that. You could douse it. You could cover them with that thing. And then you smell ah, like rotten yeah, milk all day. to you all day and shit. You're like, God damn it. We used to do that all the time. <laughs> Remember uh, um, now and laters? You'd rip your fucking. Could you even chew a now and later? You'd pull your teeth together, and, <laughs> oh, just pop it open in class and shit. Yeah, does your fucking filling would pop out? Oh, those would kill me today, did man. Did you guys ever? I've talked about this on the podcast before, but mm. uh, did you guys ever have a food fight or anything in any of the years you were in school? Yeah, I remember it, it, elementary school, and elementary, then in, and then that's in, early. Yeah, no, and then in uh, Portola Junior High. It was just sad, but it was like prison. That school was like a fucking prison yard. <laughs> Our high school was uh, ninth grade. It was pretty rough. Uh, my freshman year was, what are we, 87, 88, 89, yeah, 87, 88. And they still had a smoking lounge for the kids. <laughs> for the kids. Stop. Stop. If you Wait. could, if you were 18 and over, you could smoke in there if you wanted to. If you were under 18 and you had your parents' permission, you could smoke cigarettes in a classroom. So you would go around this one corner wait, wait. of the fucking school wait. and it would just be, <laughs> imagine walking down this hallway right here and we're just turning this corner to continue down there and this whole area is just a smoke cloud. That's what it was like. Wait, but what parent can <laughs> I know, like, right? She's there, 15, good. she, she needs her smoke. six. I need them. We get a two for one here. Go ahead. She fucking yeah. who's condoning one year they did that and then we also would have the, the cops come in they came in a couple times with dogs checking lockers we were you know suburbs so it's a drug school uh but one year is my junior year and my buddy at the time his name is mark penn i want to give him credit senior year people have hit me up after i talked about this too and one of the things is super funny i'm still friends with a, a girl from back home named nikki and her daughters go to the high school we went to right uh -oh. <laughs> so my junior year is 1990, and there's been talk all semester about this food fight, and everyone's going to uh. do it. So, so my buddy Mark Penn got tired of hearing everybody talk about <laughs> it and never fucking knew it. Because every day it's like, it's going to happen in fourth period. I remember these things, like building. Like, yeah, there's everyone's gonna be, going oh, on. Yeah. I remember there's going to yes. be a walkout yeah. third yeah, yeah, period. Yeah, 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 that kind of shit. <laughs> We're yeah. going to wear our uniforms <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah stupid. It's going to be a food fight today. And yeah, then yeah, nothing yeah. happened. Never there was happens. four different love, lunch shifts yeah. and never happened. Yeah. But this fucking day, yeah. it's Pizza Friday, pizza and we're up Friday. there, and we had the <laughs> styrofoam cups with the milkshakes. And we're sitting at a table just like you and I are now. Now it's a three-tier uh, cafeteria. Oh. It goes bottom level, and then there's a smaller middle level and a smaller top level, right? And at the bottom is where you get the food, and that's the bigger level of the three. The top's the smallest, and we're the upper upperclassmen, so we've got the top level. We're sitting where we want to sit. And his back is to the railing of the second level and behind him. Okay, okay, the gotcha. Second level so is just back. down here yeah, and then yeah, yeah. all the way down there. Yeah. And he just looks at me and I go, you think you think what's going to happen today? He's like, <laughs> he goes, yep. And he takes his fucking milkshake and he fucking throws it. I mean, no. Christina. No. And launched it way over the second level. It goes down the bottom level. Fantasy. It hits a table. Boom. It explodes everyone screams food fight people flip their tables <laughs> pizza corn there were milkshakes hitting the wall up here sliding down it was mayhem i'm telling you mayhem no one listened it was everybody fucking going nuts on each other yeah yeah people were walking by to go to class they're chucking milk fucking cards up <laughs> everywhere hitting principal everywhere okay it's 1990 everywhere 
I tell that story a couple years ago on probably the crab feast. And my friend Nikki hits me up and goes, hey, just wanted to let you know they still don't serve milkshakes. It was 1990. It was 1990. 30 fucking years they have not served milkshakes at that school because of that that day. that's the kind of teacher logic that makes no sense it's we as got if in trouble. We, you know we had to, you know what our punishment because everyone took part everyone there was no way to single this person out. i think mark ended up someone ratted him out but so we, he got he got he patient got zero he got but we had to sit oh, and wow. eat lunch the rest of the year we still had a couple months left in silence <laughs> no that's what they made the whole cafeteria had to be silent fourth period we just had to sit there quiet and be like oh shit man like the breakfast club <laughs> yeah. but i like how they blame the milkshake for the incident like we got to ban these milkshakes they always have to milkshakes do are a problem yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these milk bags the milk bags were a problem that's i mean different. they were killing we were killing each other with those things well, that's giving sure. third graders yeah. milk bags like yeah putting them up to our titty and like yeah and teachers are walking by like what are you guys come on i remember there was this kid in our class who would chop up smarties and snort Sniffing. them like yeah. cocaine. That was the first. I absolutely had kids in our class that did that too. I might have even sniff a little pixie dust. I think I had pixie, pixie dust. Sticks. But the it, sticks pixie and kids stick. would pretend yeah. that was cocaine. I mean, the pixie sticks were meant to practice doing cocaine, right? Like, I'll Google, never they have, do they still have pixie sticks? Hell did you yeah. grow up with those in the dog? Yeah, I oh. did. Dude, this is. And fun uh, dip was the same thing with just a shit. sugar thing you licked and stuck in there. <laughs> I talked about it on my album. My grandmother was like, here's Kool-Aid. Put your wet finger in that shit. Like, I'm not chasing ice cream, man. Yeah, there they are. Look at them. There it is. Updated their packaging. Yeah. Those you were, didn't need to. Those were cocaine sticks. And that was and straight cocaine. Your, your blow. But anyway, so the, their brilliant solution was to just ban Milk Smarties, sticks. ban Pixie Smart, Sticks. Yeah, like, yeah. is that really going to... It just, always, just it always, the it. Tipper Gore with the whole put parental That's advisory right. lyrics on albums. Okay, thank you for the millions <laughs> of sales. Yeah, please put that on our album. Please. I know. It's so funny because we're, I, I feel the cycle that we're in right now is so parallel to the 80s. Tipper Gore, um, the hysteria over lang the language policing, mm -hmm. right? And then what happened creatively is you had Madonna who was Frenching Black Jesus and dancing in mm -hmm. front of burning crosses. You know, I'm the whore. Madonna was the big slut. And then you had... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had Ozzy Osbourne, who was a devil worshiper. Biting heads off of yeah. bats. Even so, though that happened, but still, whatever. But, but so same. So, but now... Play the albums backwards. And yes. messages satanic, to kill yourself and the satanic. Beatles. And, yeah. and now look what's here. WAP, right? So now it's Madonna times a million because her wet ass pussy is the song of the yeah, Her the pussy's year. dried up at this point. Dried right? a fuck. Yeah, I mean, how many... I don't know. Actually, I'm wrong. She's banging some young kid. But she's got a guy. kid. How does she have time for such a wet pussy? I don't I mean, know. who's got time for that? Who's got time for that And then that guy who put his blood in the shoe was yep, little nas, nas. Like can we be honest stuff. about that do yeah. we really think there's not a drop of blood from those little kids over there selling those <laughs> shoes really is his blood the first blood in the nikes i don't think so pretty sure there's a lot of blood in those nikes i think you're right go fuck yourself Nike. yeah blood sneakers yeah is that what you they're mean called? the blood sneakers that you sell already <laughs> just had somebody else's blood in there sorry yeah <laughs> Oh, so you've got a little girl. How do you? Uh, <laughs> what a transition! No, but how do you explain? Like, has Stella heard WAP? Like, how no, are you gonna? I mean, not with me. She hasn't. But I look. I play real music in front of her. I yeah. don't censor it. I let her ask questions. You know, I'm yeah. not. I, I mean, I try to find the fucking kids' version, but. You know, we didn't grow up with a Disney version no, of a fucking song. Not. We grew up in a real world. I don't. I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe in protecting our kids, but not to over protecting our kids. Yeah. I don't, I feel I like this don't watch TV, don't watch this, don't, I, we got to watch the internet. We got to police the internet. But yeah, you know, we grew up seeing shit a little too early and a little this, a little, but I feel like it helps you in the long run be a more, <clears throat> well, I feel like if these Karens out there. <laughs> didn't have that kind of upbringing if they had a little bit of adversity or some shit that went down early yeah. they probably yep. wouldn't be the, who they are you know I what agree, i mean yeah. they're very fucking and like louis ck had this great bit about like i remember a, while, a long time ago he's like the gays can't get married how will i explain it to my children yeah, he's it's like it's not my problem you fucking talk to them <laughs> yeah, idiot right, yeah. Talk to your fucking kids. Yeah. I feel the same way. Like, just, okay, can you explain but it's stuff? also, he's like, it's not my problem to teach your dumb kids. <laughs> <laughs> you tell your dumb kid. You tell your dumb yeah. kid. 
Yeah, these you sensitive can't. fucking white women. Yeah, it sensitive is white, white women. women are going to be the downfall of mankind. I agree. Mankind, not man, men, yeah. mankind. These sensitive white women. I agree. It's too. It's annoying. They suck. They're they fucking, fucking ruining suck. everything. Yes. Who's offended? The white ladies are offended. I was on a call thing. with the school, and uh, you know, it was a big call about going back to school. It was a couple weeks ago. Hey, everyone that wants to get on this call, we're going to zoom in. We're all. I mean, it's, you know, a bunch of parents are on here because it's. Like All 500 of, uh, people on a fucking Zoom call? And everyone's chilling, having it, you know, and not Janice. Mm-mm. Janice wasn't having it. I just, he just speaks up out of there like, I just want to, oh, I don't know, like everything wasn't good, now it's good. And he's like, Janice, we can, uh, I, I just don't know why we're rushing everything. I mean, my kids want to go and I just don't know. And he's like, well, Janice, you still have the option to, to do homeschool for those kids and parents who aren't comfortable yet. And. You know, but it's just like everyone's rushing back. He's like, Janice, we polled the community and 90% of people want this. And then he's finally, he said, Janice, we can have this all flying. I was like, oh, God, I'm over there laughing like, yeah, fuck you, Janice. God, don't you be keeping these kids home anymore, Janice. I mean, point of personal privilege. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen that video. Can you guys dig up point of personal privilege? You have to see this because the problem is, <clears throat> is that I understand the need for inclusivity and wanting everybody to feel like they belong because they do belong. That's yeah. absolutely right. And then there's a line where you go, okay, Janice, thanks. Like, we'll take that up later. Go fuck off. There has to be some societal policing of, of stupidity and getting yes. the fuck out of line. I, I just believe, don't I, get I, out I'm of with line. you. Like, everyone belongs, but we all don't belong in all the places. I don't, <laughs> I know I don't belong in certain places. I'm like, oh, I don't belong here. I, I'm going to shut the fuck up about that because I don't even know what the fuck that's going, what's going on over there. I'm going to mind my business. Not I'm going to walk in and go, what's going on? I already know a better way to do this. You know, I'm like, no, I, don't, I have no idea I know. what's going on here. I think that, you know, if you want to belong, you can go ingratiate yourself, make yourself part of whatever it is and get along with people. And if you don't belong, you know you don't belong. You know you don't belong. I don't belong. I'm not offended don't that y'all don't it. want me because I don't belong here. I know. You know? I know. I know. Ugh, it's, well, let me know when you find point of personal privilege. Okay, you got to what? Have you seen this fucking mm -hmm. thing? I don't think My so. head explodes and I love it. I love it. If we want to defeat capitalism, we are going to need a party that will organize working people to fight for the demands that we want and to win socialism. Thank you so much. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, of pronoun? Privilege. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to... C to address everyone. <laughs> Even she's like, okay. That Quick was... point of privilege once again. Hi, James Jackson, Sacramento DSA, he, him. I have already asked people to be mindful of the chatter of their comrades who are sensitive to sensory overload. And that goes <laughs> double for the heckling and the hissing. It is also triggering to my anxiety. <laughs> like... The be comradely doesn't ju isn't just for like you know let's keep things simple or whatever. It's so that people aren't gonna get triggered and so that it doesn't affect their performance as a delegate. Okay. Christina, <laughs> I would pay like a thousand dollars to sit right there in the back and be like, go fuck yourself. Just sit there and do that. Like who's that? Who's doing that? Thing? Just being triggering like that. This is also, everyone has to worry about everything that happens to me, world. Me, Do you know there are people out there that, that murder people and chop them up into pieces? They don't give a fuck about your anxiety. Get over your anxiety. I know. God. I know. Point of personal privilege. Yeah. Point, of point, of, point of personal privilege. Point of personal privilege. <laughs> I've never even heard that before. So have you heard about the Demi Lovato Froyo? incident uh, uh i don't think so i love demi lovato of course. are you about to shit on demi lovato I, I well i'm about to shit on a behavior of okay. demi lovato Let's hear that. i don't know her personally i'm not familiar with her work All, i'm only familiar with her beef with the local froyo place that she frequents and she tweeted something to the extent of we need to cancel this frozen it's like a mom and pop shop in la here and she said Okay, she was, she was triggered because they sell, quote, sugar-free cookies, other diet foods. The singer who's open about her eating disorders was criticized for bullying a small business. Basically, she was like, they're wrong because I'm coming in here to get um, my frozen yogurt, my healthy frozen yogurt, and then you guys put these other sugary things, and it's misrepresenting what you sell, and you need to be cognizant of people who are on diets, and I have an eating problem, and da-da-da. Bitch, have you been to a grocery store? 
Have you been to a grocery store where there's sugar-free diet, non-fat, non-dairy, non-everything, yeah. and then all this other yeah. shit? It's called then vegetables. Go, sh- go shop on the perimeter of the, the fucking grocery store. That's right. Live auto. That's so, where all the healthy shit is. If so, you don't know, it's on the perimeters. All the just, shit's in the middle. Let me get make sure I have the c- correct. Demi Lovato calls out a Los Angeles frozen yogurt shop for its, quote, harmful messaging regarding their sugar-free cookies and other diet food. So she tried to out them and cancel this local beloved Froyo place. And the backlash was so extreme that now she is going back to... Um, now she so oh, here's the original text finding it extremely hard to order froyo from this business when you have to walk past tons of sugar-free cookies slash other diet foods before you get to the counter do better please i'm confused i don't understand why that's a problem i don't fucking know you know what i mean like look if you want the decadence that you're walking toward have a little guilt-free snack on the way I don't... It seems to be strategically placed. Well, Froyo's the unhealthiest shit in the world. It's I'm not saying. healthy junk. I'm in this uh, McDonald's, <laughs> and y'all got the carrots up front. What the fuck's going on here? I just want a Big Mac. It's so fucking ridiculous. But McDonald's ca- caved to their thing, and now they offer apple slices and shit. Like, who the fuck is eating? I'm not eating that when I go to I've McDonald's. I've never had an apple People go, slice. you can order a salad from McDonald's. I go, have you? It tastes like shit. You may as well just get the cheeseburger. And it's all the lettuce and like shit, shit that falls off yeah. at the end of the day of the Big Mac and shit. <laughs> it's a big but, salad. Yeah, but my point with Demi Lovato is, at what point are we just letting people's mental illness be dictate how we live everyone else is yes. living because how it's clear. we all Look, live yeah i i my feel for her i'm not saying like she clearly has an eating disorder she like has I some said, mental like issues Demi yeah i don't know her from anybody she either. seems fine yeah so at one point do you need to take responsibility for your own stuff and stop projecting it onto the local froyo place and trying to get them canceled because it upsets you personally it's a point of personal privilege. Yeah, and this is a mom and pop froyo <laughs> shop yeah. that you're going to run out of uh, business. Point of privilege. Thank you. Point of privilege. You're going to run out of uh, <laughs> business. Yeah. In a pandemic, for God's sake, they probably hadn't even been open the whole time. That makes me sick, and especially when you're a wealthy celebrity and you know that these people depend on selling fucking froyo and cookies to make a living. I don't know. It may, and that makes me crazy that the mentally ill are just ruling everything right now. We need to push back. Like on our lives psychos. when we grew up. And so it's, <gasps> of course it's a point of privilege. God, I'd like to, did you just figure out why these people yeah, aggravate me so that's much? That's why they aggravate me. Like all you fucking oh, self-righteous, woke, religious zealots, the zealots of anything are, yeah. are probably a problem. That's why I'm so triggered by them. I'm triggered by her being triggered. Yeah, that's what triggers me. You're triggering. Should I cancel that- Demi? Should I <laughs> Should I get take to Twitter? God damn it, I'm triggered by your triggering. <laughs> but here's the difference between, here's responsibility. It's like, I don't take to Twitter the minute I have a dumb thought. Like maybe just wait a second before you have the thought of like, hey, this sucks, you know? Yeah, you mean not being reactive immediately? Yeah. yeah. Can we, how about that? Can we encourage that in society? Did she go back and apologize? Yeah, so now her whole life is being dedicated to making it right right. at the Froyo place. Fine with that. Like her whole existence on social media now is making it right, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's nice. I'm like, that's fine. I appreciate that. She's Demi the Froyo. (laughs) Demi the Froyo. Demi the Froyo. Demi the Froyo. It's a lot. This is a very musical episode. I know. Can I tell you the best thing my kids said to me yesterday? We were in Santa Monica walking past tons of homeless people. And there was one guy. It's wearing, San Francisco out here now. It's really gnarly. And uh, then you saw a guy in a do rag. He goes, Mom, is that guy a pirate? <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed so hard. I'm like, oh my God, I've never he put that be, together. It totally <laughs> looks a like a street pirate. <laughs> <laughs> you don't own a boat, I promise you. Or right, give me some pirate. money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yar. <laughs> a street pirate. Oh, <sighs> so I explained to him. I go, well, no, I, he's not a pirate, but he maybe he likes to look like one. That's kind of a tough look, mm-hmm. you know. It's a good look. That's definitely a tough look. <laughs> you throw a patch on that motherfucker, and I'm sure he's missing teeth already. You got the whole look. You got the whole look out there. <laughs> You got a fucking <laughs> pigeon on his shoulder and shit. Arr. Street fire. <laughs>
We are supported by Azuna Fresh. There's nothing worse than a stinky house, right? You walk into someone's house and you're like, ugh, they have cats, they have dogs, they have whatever. With Azuna Fresh, it's like you put this jar in, in the, the trouble areas of your house. We have one in our living room. We have one in the kitchen and it absorbs the odors. It's an antimicrobial plant-based odor eliminator and they smell so good and also comes as a spray. Um, but it's like a magic. It eliminates bacteria, mold, mildew, and fungus from the air. That Each jar lasts 60 to 90 days. And there's no weird chemicals or toxins, which means healthier air, healthier immune systems, and fewer allergies for you and your family. Right now, I've got a special offer for my listeners. 20% off your purchase. Isn't that amazing? 20% off your purchase. Go to Azuna fresh.com today and use our promo code WMMA for 20% off your new favorite odor eliminator. And they smell so good. That's promo code WMMA at A-Z-U-N-A fresh.com. We are supported by Plush Care. When we think of health, we tend to think of exercising regularly, eating right and getting eight hours of sleep. But you know something? Mental health uh, is part of your health, guys. I've always really told people get into therapy it is just the best and it can be hard to talk about some personal stuff but that's why plush care makes it easy to connect with a doctor wherever you are whenever you're ready plush care's primary care physicians are here for you seven days a week to help you start feeling better as soon as possible in addition to handling ongoing and urgent care they also treat a wide range of common mental health issues like anxiety depression stress or even trouble sleeping so if you're feeling down worried or not like yourself you can book a same day appointment and you'll see a plush care doctor right from the comfort of your home using your phone or computer they'll discuss treatment options with you and have your prescription sent to your local pharmacy as needed. Plush Care accepts major insurance carriers and is available in all 50 states. Plush Care makes it easier than ever to take care of yourself inside and out. Start your membership today. Go to plushcare.com slash WMMA to start your free 30-day trial. That's P-L-U-S-H-C-A-R-E dot com slash WMMA for a free 30-day trial. Plushcare.com slash WMMA. All right, let's do some follow-ups. Uh, do we have, what are the voicemails we have? Oh, you have your hands on. I'm so glad you're here, by the way. Thank you for having me. Thank you. A street so hey, Christina. So I remember you guys were talking on the podcast um, a week or two ago about how dishwashers are awful because you actually have to wash your dishes beforehand. I always soak mine in soapy water for about an hour, and then I Jesus. switch it over to the dishwasher. What's and the point? then I very rarely ever have to go back and see any dirty dishes. There's like... A 90% success rate for me doing this. So try it out. All right, bye, guys. I mean, I get it, but that just adds more work. Like pre-rinse. You do have to pre-rinse. I know, but I don't want to. I challenged it. There was a, whatever the one that's on <laughs> Cascades, like, you don't even need to rinse. I was like, you don't know our fucking house. And I tried, and I was like, you definitely need to pre-rinse. You de- cook that ketchup on the fucking kid's plate and shit. <laughs> point of personal privilege, Cascades. Point of personal privilege, I have a dishwasher. <laughs> Your dishwasher's straight. Uh, quick point of privilege. Quick point. A quick one. I just have a quick one here. <laughs> Could you please not use gender language? Okay. What other voicemails do we have? Let's do follow up. Oh fuck. Hey mommy Tina. I just listened to your episode with Dr. Hoffman and you had mentioned the thing about hot dogs and how dangerous they are for kids. Even as little ones you're supposed to chop them up. But I remember when I was about six or seven years old, I was eating a whole raw hot dog. And I was playing around, and I remember it going down my throat and me choking for a second and my older brother not knowing what to do. And then I just threw it back up, a whole hot dog, and just threw up all over the carpet. And it was disgusting, but I kind of learned my lesson at that time, but also was choking on an entire hot dog as a small child. So... Even when kids are older, just keep an eye on them because kids are stupid and they'll do stupid things. That's so <laughs> dumb. Have you ever had to give the Heimlich? Not yet. Have you? Yeah. I've, to who? I'm three for four saving lives. It's in my Instagram bio. I'm three for four. That's the Hall of Fame numbers, all There's right? No Rest at RIP that. Grandma. Grandma just, didn't make it. I was giving her CPR, but she had a massive heart attack. There's nothing I could have done. Even the fucking professionals didn't save her, so I don't feel bad. You know what I mean? This is You tried saving your dying grandmother? Yeah. Yeah, you. We've talked about this. No, that's well, all right. Just so let me go I to my. Let me go it. to the successful ones first. Uh, I was working Christ. with an editor one time who was sitting up in front of me, and I was writing and producing, and 
I heard him going, <gasps> and I was like, "What the fuck are you up there laughing about?" Because you know, editors are weird. Editors will find like one frame of something. Like, Look at this fucking asshole. <laughs> By the way, every editor I've ever worked with that's worked on your shit loves you. They've all oh, been like, you nice. know, Christina. Oh man, she was Aww. one of the funny ones. <laughs> um, and he's up there and he turns around and he just points like this. I was like, oh shit. And I hop over the desk and I'm like, bang, bang, bang. And then shit just flies everywhere. And he's like, oh, oh God, thank you so much. I was choking. He's like, please do me a favor. Don't tell anybody. I was like, bro, I'm telling everybody. You yeah. Know? I'm not, I saved a life today. I'm yeah. telling everyone who asked me how my day went what that I he, saved you. What did he choke on? I don't know what the, f he was eating up there, you know, a little thing on the, he was just choking. He just turned around and pointed. Fuck. I saved him. But somehow I feel like if I don't eat the thing that he choked on, I will never choke. That's so you, not you the really way that need works. That's not the way that shit works. <laughs> no, but I need to know what he choked on so that that doesn't happen. All right, I'm not going to eat that. <laughs> was, was it grilled or fried? Okay. I cannot believe you've done this. Did that? I did it for Stella. She no. actually, she actually, I was, Fuck this was off. like a, I see it's so funny. I want to say a year ago all the time because we've lost a year of our yeah. life. So it's probably two years ago now. I was actually at her mom's. We were all having dinner and she, Stella got up and walked away from the table. So I just thought she was going to the restroom. But then she turned around and came back and she was started to turn red. And I was like, oh shit, you're choking. And so I got behind her and she actually had taken a, she had a little bit of ice and, and it got lodged in her throat and she couldn't breathe past it. It wasn't going to fucking melt. So I went behind her and I remember from my lifeguard days, I did a little, and that fucking ice said, Pow! And shot across and her mom's like i don't know what i would have done if you weren't here i was like we're good and i even texted my therapist and go hey just want you to know i'm not future tripping about my daughter over here almost dying or anything like this shit's working you know it's really yeah. working do you ever have anxiety when you don't have anxiety just make it up for myself no 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 like i was in my shrinks today oh about not anxiety about being like how come I don't have I don't anxiety? Feel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've never self-checked that. And God damn you if I do that now. I don't want to start checking. Like, how do I feel? Yeah. Right, right. Hypervigilance. Go ahead. Um, and then I the third believe... one was my cousin. He. Uh... Wait, hold on. One, one thing. So when you do a little kid, mm -hmm. what's the difference between a grown-up and a little kid? So you don't, you don't do the whole fist. You just do a you. How did I do it? I just used like a small, like, you know, I don't want to make the white power sign here. But a <laughs> I don't small even know little... it. And just like, just checked it gently. And so it's in between the and rib cage. Where are you hitting? It's under your diaphragm. Under like your here, diaphragm. You're, you're going up. You're up. coming up. So it's and, like and a little. And even if you do it properly, you can break someone's ribs. Like it's, it's a violent thing to try to get it out of there. But with kids, you don't want to use a whole fist and crank. So I just, I, I made a little knot like this and I just pressed it nice and popped it up. And that fucking thing shot Thank right God. out. Right across How the How does floor. that work? Is it like just the, how, why, why does that work? Do we know? I don't, I mean... I don't know. I know it just gets lodged. And if you, and they say if you, you can do it on a chair or if you're by yourself, you can lean on the back of a chair and try to get it out like that. God. Um, and then my cousin who smoked some marijuana, we found out later he was allergic to it. Didn't know that went into a full on seizure. His eyes rolled back in his head and I'm there pinch his nose, pull him back. I'm about, to, I'm this far away, like from the mic of giving him CPR and he snapped out of this whole fucking seizure and everything. Uh, and then I smacked him around a little bit and he's like, take me to the hospital. I was like, we're not taking you to the fucking hospital, dude. And that was three. And then my grandmom, so we were living with my grandmom after my mom kicked us out of the house we were in for high school. And she walked out of her room. My twin brother and I are home. We're at community college at the time, but we're in between classes. And um, she just walked out of her bedroom and screamed, someone help me. Those are literally her last oh. words. And she fell straight, straight, arms to the side on her face, like <sighs> broke her nose, her teeth came out, and she was gasping for air, like <gasps> like that. I just told this on Bert's thing too. And I, I was a lifeguard at the time, so my brother and I switched places. I was on with 911, and they don't want you to get off the phone until the you know, people get there. So we switched, and I was giving her CPR, mouth to mouth, and doing the chest compressions. And I had her breathing a little bit more, and then the paramedics got there and had her, had her breathing more her color came back she looked good i thought she was going to be okay and then i stayed back to um you have to put your house they, they throw shit out of the way when they come in you know they're not worried about yeah. your coffee table they're clearing an area to yeah. work on this person yeah. to save their life so if you don't know when that happens you got to put your home back together and then someone's got to give the police report so i stayed to do that and they took my grandmother to the hospital and then she just she passed on the way oh, i'm so sorry yeah. And then I would go and, and I, I just talked about this the other day because I believe that's where my OCD was born. I mm. believe like we, I was a college kid. I had a bed, I was a little, you know, kid and I didn't keep my room clean. I didn't care about that. But 
the moment my grandmother died, I felt the need and the urge to want to keep her home the way she had it. Mm. So these two college kids <laughs> lived in this home that did not look like we had hummels and shit and i would dust them <laughs> i would dust them and keep them for, clean do you, for those of you who don't know what a hummel is google <laughs> hummel figurines <laughs> they're expensive too, they're, they're well. collector's items yeah and i would kidding? dust them and that's keep your all fortune her shit. <laughs> that's yeah, your inheritance she had birds look up hummel birds your hummels <clears throat> she had adorable. a bird <clears throat> um excuse me but um yeah these this is what i would this is what i would dust some of these right here and people are like, I can't believe you got everybody's smoking weed and partying and drinking beer, but it's just all decorated hummus. like an older lady lives there. You know, <laughs> dusting. They're like, Ryan, you dusting hummels. And I just after that, <laughs> I, I was like, watch the hummels, God damn it. I would be uh I kept I started keeping things clean and organized after that. And I feel like that trauma is where that O C D because that's really what it is. It's just some sort of trauma coming out yeah. or stress or anxiety, and I believe that's what it was. Well, at least, you know, the problem with these... My grandma uh, died, but my bed's made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem with um, OCDs, at least in my world, and hi the hypervigilance and such, is that it's really been rewarded in my life. Like, it, it made me get really good grades in college. It made me want to succeed in stand-up. This is incredible drive. It's why you're sitting in that chair yeah. right now. It really is. Yeah, so the problem with, with these really unhealthy behaviors is that they pay off. <laughs> they do. They pay off in the long run. I remember seeing they make like you a, miserable. I can't remember the uh, basketball guy that wouldn't leave practice until he hit like oh. 10, but it had to be swishes in a row. He'd hit oh, nine. Oh, who is that? Tom I, told me about yeah, this. Yeah, and it made him better. It ended up making him better, but it also <laughs> probably fucked with him later in is life. Is this like Kobe Bryant? It no, might, it wasn't, I don't Kobe? think it was Kobe. It wasn't Kobe that Kobe was a big practicer as well, right? Yeah. Tom told me that he was like but always. But the OCD things are like, I got to do this before I walk away. I got to do uh -huh. this before I walk away. I have this shit. OCD where I can't take the last bite of anything. You leave it? I leave it. Even if it's a tiny... Why? Ask my shrink. Really? I don't even think I brought it up. This is because such a minor OCD that I don't deal with it. So it's a piece of pizza or sandwich, anything. Just a little bite I will left. leave the last bite. There's huh. something so empty about clean plate. I don't like it. There ha I just have to pre rinse it first, Christina. You got to <laughs> pre rinse <laughs> Free rinse that plate, girl. Fuck your pre rinse <laughs> Fuck your pre rent. Nope, I'm a believer in the pre rents. Wait, what's your OCD? So what, what's oh yours? Oh my God, which what I, I, I like to keep things yeah. organized and clean and neat. Everything has a place. It's good. Um, it's good. And and do you feel... I'll do you, tell you one. Do you, hold on. Do you ever feel like you're done? Or are you always in that OCD? Like, is there a time where you go... There are times where I unplug you. Done. Yes. That, and then I let it neat. sort of get to a point where I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it, but it's still clean. And then I'll clean or have somebody come clean it. Okay, but but is there? I'm saying, is there a contentment level with your cleanliness where you go, everything's a hundred percent, everything's good. I can oh, sit down yes. and I can chill. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so you're not constantly no, in. No, I watch my brother when I'm home and he was doing that shit, and I told him, <laughs> I was like, dude, you make me feel good about myself over. Here. He's wiping every time somebody lift a drink up. He's over there wiping it. I'm like, oh, got you bad. Uh, I should have been there helping me with the CPR. It's not that bad when you're doing that. Uh, um, okay, so what's another one? I used to do this thing where somebody would say a word, a sentence, and I would usually fixate on like the last word. Like if you said likable, let's say, I would then I would do it on my fingers. I would go likable, and that's a three syllable. Then I, and I would do it again till it ended on the thumb. I go likable, 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 <laughs> and I would do that with words, and I would know when it would hit on the thumb. I was big for a long Whoa, time. Wow, that's a good one. I would count steps. Yeah. I would count going up steps. Oh, that's good. Steps. Like if yeah. my grandmother had a, a flight of stairs, I would always count two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I would do that. I still yeah. do it once in a while, but I was doing that for a while. The other one I did for a long time too, uh, before computers got here, is I would hold the remote in my hand. Yeah. And it has a pattern of three across. Yeah. I learned how to count by threes like a motherfucker. I three, six, <laughs> nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, twenty seven, thirty, thirty three, thirty six, thirty nine, forty two, forty five, forty eight, fifty one, fifty four, fifty seven, sixty. Like, and I would just run my finger over those threes and count silently in my head. I would do the words and try to always land that syllable on my thumb. Um, and then I would do a lot of the numbers, counting numbers meant a lot to me. I didn't know and you were I that. I didn't know. I mean, know. that that was in my in my twenties when like I just got kicked out of the house. I'm totally, you know what I mean, like yeah. anxiety. And I look back. I'm still a leg shaker. I still really bounce my legs yeah. a lot, but mostly when I'm thinking or something creative, I 
I always sit and bounce my legs. It's an um, anxious. It feels right. good though to me. Like I, I remember going to Brookstone um, in the mall. Remember they had <laughs> those foot Brookstone. massagers. Yeah, yeah. I would put my feet on it and it would physically hurt me to stop. <laughs> like I love the motion of my legs bouncing. You know, it just feels good to me. I like being hurt. Like I like um, toothpaste that burns. <laughs> I, I like burning. Yeah. Like hot sauce and yeah. stuff that burns. Yeah. Like ah give me some more of that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like i enjoy um eating sour belts to the point where my sour belts there's a specific kind what's a sour belt it's i've like, heard of every sour i've never heard of a oh belt. they're so hard to find i there's a specific gas station here a, in the I valley think you mean those, a specific those, one specifically a pacific strawberry sour station. belts oh okay sour powers are good <laughs> i never in my life how the hell did i miss these so, sour belts what I do, there's a mood I get in. It's a self-flagellation mood. I don't know if it's an OCD, but it's definitely a behavior. And I'll be like, I got to eat that whole fucking thing. And I'll do it to where my tongue is like, ah, just like yeah. raw. And then I like to brush with like the uh, peroxide, tough uh, arm and hammer. It. You like to feel it. I want to strip the enamel off yeah. my teeth. Like I like that. I love the flossers because I really get in. And then I throw that shit on the floor. We all know oh, that. We know that. Yeah. yeah. We just drop right there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I have a thing about supplies, like when I'm in a hotel room and I'm in a hotel where I don't, I sense that my needs aren't being met. I will quickly bring in the supplies I feel I need. Like I need enough water. I need um, coffee. I need, and I'll go and like gather the supplies immediately just to feel calmer. And situated. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. That's a child to think of not having that stuff. Yep. And you're like, I got I'm it. also God. still from growing up with so little and having next to nothing most of the time anytime i go anywhere even if i'm by myself on the road when i unpack my shit i keep it in a small little area oh wow that's interesting you know what i mean i don't hang shit up yeah. and put it away and i'm like you use the drawers in a hotel who the does that matter you you psycho <laughs> what's the matter with you keep it in your suitcase yeah. like a real human being <laughs> yeah, you don't live here asshole <laughs> yeah you just move into minneapolis for the weekend you dick face <laughs> yeah i don't I do agree. that yeah. who does that Wait, put your feet up. It's your house now. No, it's not. No, it's not. I guess my OCD too also, like I have systems. So whenever I go on the road or, or vacation or take a bag somewhere, the dirty clothes go inside out. So I know when I get oh. home that that's what I have to wash. If it doesn't Smart. stink in the hotel and I didn't wear everything, you know, I do shit like that. <laughs> but I feel like I, I it's funny because Bert has said this before too. I feel like because of being a producer all these years also, I feel like I produce things in my life. Mm. you know like i make lists before i go like here's everything i need for that Same. shit yeah. you know i'm on i try to be on point and responsible and hyper organized you know where are we going i got these well, don't worry i got seven different ways we're gonna get there today <laughs> you know we're good we're that's good. such a result of not having your needs met as a kid when you're like i know seven different routes if that freeway's closed i can get there this yep. way um man i do that thing too and i'm like back when i was featuring okay, if I miss that plane, I can take this next flight out too. That So I get there on time. Because if mm. I don't get there on time, then I can get fired. If I get I fired, get I can paid. be a comedian. I can be a comedian. That's the only thing I want to do in my life. <laughs> oh, it's exhausting. Okay. Um, Follow-ups. Do we have one more voicemail follow-up? Let's do that. And then can I want to ask you a question. Sure, go ahead. Do you find yourself, because of being so independent young, prior to having a family and stuff, do you find it easy just to pick up and go somewhere? Yeah. And I don't mean move like Texas. Like this is, I, I mean, I'm just going to go fucking do this this weekend. You know what I mean? Like I've, I just, I'll go to Big Bear for the weekend on a, on a whim <laughs> or anything like that. Cause I've just, I wanted to get away so much um, and have that freedom that it's not a problem for me just to, to go. Yeah. I don't, I think it's more rooted in my bouncing back and forth between my parents Maybe, yeah. and living out of a suitcase as a kid so much that now like stand up travel, people are always like, how do you do that? Like I literally went to Phoenix. I did five shows in two days. And then when I flew back to LA, I didn't go to my home. I went to a hotel to meet my family. Right. And that was like, I was like, I don't care. Like that stuff doesn't phase me. Like, yeah, like you said, like, but Tom and I move like maniacs. We're always moving. Yeah, you guys are moving. I mean, I'm- We're moving fools. Carondelet, I remember. Yeah. I remember, that's one of my favorite, most dangerous <laughs> spots. Carondelet. Carondelet. I'll never forget that name. <sighs> Neither will I, it's burned. All right, what, let's do the last uh, voicemail follow-up. Carondelet. What an- Hey, Mommy, this is Cassie from Northern California. 
Um, so I have somewhat of a follow-up and a Pajitsky effect. No. So on an episode a while ago, you were talking about how when you wash your face at night, it gets your pajamas all really wet. <sighs> well, I realized that what you can just do is just take your pajama top off and wash your face with no shirt on. Oh, wow. I bet wow. Tommy Buns will love it, and your clothes will stay nice and dry so you can sleep nicely in bed. Thank you very much. I wish I was coming out in May, but I was in California. So thanks, Mommy. Have you ever thought of that? Washing your face shirtless no. in your life? No, Who I does that? I just changed my shirt, the wet one, you know? Like, oh, two shirts for a face wash. <laughs> wow, and I never even you never even thought of that, huh? Gosh. Let's do Pajitsky effects. These are the most fun. I feel like you've got a bunch of these too. I'll tell you a dumb one that yeah. didn't dawn on me yeah. until I'm serious. I can't <laughs> believe I did this till like eighth, seventh or eighth grade, but I would wet my hair. Like if I just had to wet my hair in the sink in the morning or something, you know, <laughs> you shower those. the night before because you have fucking five people in a one bathroom. So I wet my hair. Yeah. And one day my friend had spent the night and I go, you, you're using warm water? <laughs> Never dawned on me. That I could have warm watered my hair. I would always put it under freeze of water. I'm like, what was I thinking? What the fuck was I thinking? Till seven, <laughs> till seventh grade. I jerked off before I figured out I could use warm water on my hair. I know. That doesn't make it's, it doesn't it's so like, stupid. Or it's like figuring out you can buy soap that you enjoy the smell of. Yeah, yeah. Either is like, are you like, I don't have to buy just any soap. Like I can get a preferential, or I can buy toothpaste that I enjoy. Not just like this just shit. Whatever. <laughs> I w I still can't smell. I wish I could smell. Some. It's been over four months. You still can't I smell. I can't a thing. Not a thing. Wow, wow. There's got to be a doctor that can help at this point with the uh, anosmia. Yeah, because mine comes back, like comes and goes a bit. Does it really? Uh huh. But I I got taste. Like it comes and goes. Taste is coming back and smell. A but bit. smells go gone. It's wild yeah. months. And did you get the vaccine yet? Mm -hmm. I wonder if the vaccine reactivated those, the anosmia and all that. Because I feel like it, my smell was getting better in my taste and then I got the vaccine and then it got worse again. I really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are supported by Ritual. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality nutrients in bioavailable forms your body can actually use. What does that mean? It's a clean vitamin. There's no sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, or artificial colorants. Uh, what I love it is that Ritual is a multivitamin that contains key nutrients in, in a form that your body can actually use. It helps fill in the gaps in your diet, right? There's no shady extras. Uh, it's a delayed release pill and they don't make you nauseous. I don't really like taking my multivitamins usually because they make me feel gross, but not Ritual. Now available for women, men, and teens, Ritual multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different life stages. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash WMMA to start your ritual today. We are supported by UE Fits True Wireless Earbuds. Let me tell you, let me tell you, until I found these earbuds, I was just doing it all wrong. Every morning I work out, I'm on my, my treadmill and I like to watch Beastie Boys videos. And now that I've done it with my UE Fits True Wireless Earbuds, it's like, what was I doing before? I love it. They fit your ear perfectly. Um, and they're such high quality. You get a guaranteed perfect fit in just 60 seconds. UE fits will stay put when you're on the go, but feel ultra comfortable so you can wear them all day long without pain or discomfort. I'm telling you, it's like you're not wearing anything at all. Using groundbreaking light form technology, UE fits mold the unique contours of your ear. It lasts for eight hours of playback on a single charge and up to 20 hours with the charging case. UE fits are perfect for listening to your favorite shows like this one all day long. For a limited time, get 15% off your pair of UE fits true wireless earbuds at ue.com slash fits. Just use promo code WMMA at checkout. Okay, let's do some uh, voicemails for Pujitsky Effect. Chrissy T, listen, I have a Pujitsky Effect. Okay, so it just hit me literally right now, even though I purchased these uh, like a week ago. I, I can uh, flock 
any time during the day. <laughs> I don't have to just wait morning and night and let the food build up in my teeth um, throughout the day. Uh, I can buy a little package of uh, blockers and leave them in my truck because I just ate a salad and chicken and it was in there. And I'm like, well, I guess this is in there for the rest of the day. No, it's not. I have my flossers. I don't leave them in my fucking truck or on the side of my bed. I'm with Tom. Love you. I got a pack of them in my console. See, I'm even not as evolved as his, this guy. I don't even have them in my purse, and I fucking should, because I do what he's talking about, where I'm like, oh, I had Korean barbecue. Guess I have to keep this food. This gristles, and this is going to alter my bite when it gets out of here five hours from now. Yeah. <laughs> you feel your bite is altered. <laughs> God damn. That's why I'm against the paper straws. How am I supposed to floss my teeth with that? The plastic <laughs> ones I bend and I floss. Don't you? Of course. Yeah. But Or I put it up under there and twist it a little bit, <laughs> make sure I don't have anything when I come to shows like yours. <laughs> no, what I do is I I get my sock and I pull a string out of the sock. No. And then I'll floss Christina! Is that for real? Christina. I'll show you right now. <laughs> I'll show you now. Yeah, string. Awesome. Hold on. These are ankle socks. These aren't the good kind. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of thread, no. So, huh? They're not the good kind. Oh, here you go. Here. Now, I, don't, I only recommend this in a pinch. Now, I'll tell you the one I saw a girl do one time. Go. Oh, my God. You just... Christina. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> I, uh, I dated a girl one time, and I watched her like look around. I was watch- She didn't know I was watching her. I watched her look around. She popped the hair out and out of her head. Hair. Hair. I wish right out of her hair. Head. And I was like, you know what? It's your hair. <laughs> It's gross that you're doing that at a party in front of everybody, but you know, back home, that's your shit right there. You know, that's your shit. Well, I'm amazed that her hair could be strong enough to floss with because that's that's some good quality hair. Good Mine hair. would not tolerate my break. It was good hair. I've flossed on airplanes before. With, with the stick or with no, with the no, stick. you wrapped it up. Like- you're going to be on passenger shaming. <laughs> oh, my God. I Shout out to her. I yeah. love passenger I love shaming. Too, She's yeah. great. But I've only done... Okay, so like I've been desperate times. You know, there's like meat teeth. And I'd be like, if I don't fucking do this, I'm going to kill myself. So I would like turn towards the window and I would secretly floss. I wasn't like... And the guy behind you is back here. <laughs> He's like, is that Christina? The False podcast? False fan. Floss. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow, but yeah. I didn't realize I could bring the floss or bring it. You know what yeah. I didn't realize? I just, in okay, 48 years. Yeah. I've been going to the dentist since I've been going to the dentist, the little kid. I didn't know you could just get nitrous. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, the lady goes, I'm going to do a deep clean on you, and I recommend um, getting a water pick, which is what I use in the shower yeah. now instead of floss, because I fucking hate floss. I use a water pick. Yeah, okay. But um, I go, hey. So it turns out they were like, we love your show. And I was like, that's Uh, nice, guys. And I was like, can I ask you something? I go, nitrous. She goes, right away. She goes, you want nitrous? Like, right away. I go, can I get it? She goes, hell yeah, you can get it. She goes, look, your insurance won't cover it, but it's like 30 bucks. I was like, done. I love when they do that to you. They're like, she's like, oh my God, this is going to be the best time you've ever had. She's telling me. She (laughs) put it it all on me. Oh, I was laughing. And she's like, do you feel it yet? I go, no. And then she cranked it out. I go, look, you know my laugh. If you're going to make me laugh like that. (laughs) And she's telling me shit and doing it, and I didn't feel a fucking thing. I loved it. And then you just float out of it. I want to do. Oh, then you just back to normal. She said that she's worked with doctors that have celebrities that order nitrous. I would do that. And they just sit and breathe it at home at night and laugh and have a good time. And they're not hot. You know what I mean? They fade out. Eventually, you'll get addicted. Yeah. The thing is, is I used to do whippets in college, which is nitrous oxide. Mm -hmm. And I would do it in a balloon until I would be in the Legoland, like wah, wah, wah. And that fried my brain, though. The next day, I was slow. Okay, two stories about that. All right. Yeah, go so ahead. So we used to go to the Grateful Dead concerts back in the day. You the, were a deadhead? The, I was not a deadhead, but I liked the Grateful Dead. And the only time, honestly, you could get the good drugs was when the <laughs> dead rolled into town. That's when everybody would go get the acid, the opium, the shrooms. Like, it came readily available when the dead rolled into town. Um, and that's where we discovered nitrous balloons. And this guy was mm. selling them. And we're watching everybody do them, and I'm hearing their voice, 
do all that shit. And yeah. one yeah. guy, we, we used to do the whippets. We also used to yeah. take the butane from lighters and oh. people would do it. And I watched a guy one time <laughs> sit and stare at a fish tank and swear he was talking to his grandfather, like shit like that. So we're at the dead concert and this guy's doing a balloon and my brother's talking, we're making fun of him laughing. The guy's like, Phew. I'll run up that hill. It was like a parking, <laughs> you know, tier. So there's a parking lot here and there's a grass I'll hill and then a parking hill. lot here, grass hill. And he's like, I'll run up that hill. We're like, 10 bucks says you can't make it up that hill. And there was a little, like, just a little gulch here before he went up the hill. That dude went full force, sprinted, fell on his fucking face, busted his two teeth out. He had a triangle right here, like a triangle busted his teeth out. We were like, ah, you dumb fuck. So also a shout out to Captain Stupid. Ed's. You probably know Captain Ed's. It's like the, the, the oldest head shop in the United oh, States. I think yeah, it has yes. the big old school dead head uh, lightning yes. bolt, red, white. It's been blue, around right? LA forever. forever. Yeah. So I go in there. This is God. And this is early 2000s. I would go in there, get a pipe or whatever. And they always had this local girl competition. So I'm standing in there and I'm watching these like cute fucking chola girls roll in. Girl competition, like like a beauty contest? And I'm like, what's going on back there? And uh -oh. I was like, oh, those girls are getting naked. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and they would be in and out. And then he's like, right here. And he's got this wall of Polaroids of huh? these girls who are naked for like the best valley girl or something. <laughs> for, I'm like, like, to come in here and see that, that was their level, right? And the guys <laughs> got this big fucking balloon and he's got a valve on. He's like, cracker. And, he, and he's he's hitting nitrous, just taking hits. And he's he's fucking gray. I'll never forget. He's clammy. He's like, what are you looking for? And I'm like, I go, bro, are you hitting nitrous? Like just like shots right now? He's like, yeah. I go, you're gonna die. You're gonna yeah. die. I go, you don't look good now at all. Like you're bluish. <laughs> and your lips turn. You're purple. clammy. Your yeah. lips are purple with that white, like the Dave Chappelle white shit around it when he does that <laughs> crack. And uh, I'm like, you don't look, and he's just hitting, and then he goes over to the tank and fills another one. I was oh like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I didn't even buy anything. I was like, I'm good. I don't want to watch you die in here. You're gonna die. But who won the Valley Girl contest? Most importantly, I think Adriana got it. <laughs> I think Adriana got it. Yeah, it's interesting what people aspire to in the Valley. Mm -hmm. Like that. That's that's her goal. Yeah. And they're yeah. showing everything, by the way. They're meows too. All of it. And open hmm. meow. And do they like the cat was yawning? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was yawning. It was a tired cat. <laughs> yeah. Did they win anything? You're the best. Do you think they, they won? They probably won like a free pipe kit or some bullshit. Who knows? I have no idea. Some rolling papers. That's wild, huh? What people will, will do. Mm -hmm. It may it's so weird. I think it's weird that people do only fans and they're like, Yeah, you can see my beef. You can watch me have sex with stuff. I don't care. Stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> the best is that okay? Uh, this is the internet. This isn't like the head shop. Uh, no. You know what I mean? But, this yeah, is they forever. Were, they were early. They were early. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you let's do see. cameos? Uh, cameo? No. Yeah. I, no. Do you? No. I feel weird about taking money to say happy birthday to somebody. Yeah. You know I personally, I mean? yeah, I do too. Cause like, you know, every now and then people hit me up. Yeah, and I'll just fucking do it for shout free. Yeah, like, I'll shout whatever. you out. Whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I feel like it's kind of weird. But I don't I don't begrudge anybody that does. No. I, they bring so much happiness to people. Look, like, no I've judgment, them. no shame on anything. I'm just. Oh, know. I judge and I shame lots of things. But, but cameo, all, yeah. I'm, I'm straight with it. Like, right. it's fine, dude. Okay. All right, let's do another Pajitsky effect. I fucking love these. Hey, Hitler. So I had a Pajitsky effect recently. I live in Northern California and frequently on the side of the road in my suburban area, there'll be fruit stands that sell a bunch of fresh strawberries or mangoes. That's good I shot. pass them every single day when I drive home and I look at them and I'm like, oh man, I really want some strawberries. <laughs> and it dawned on me the other day that I can just pull over and buy some. <laughs> so I did. I bought... $30 worth of strawberries, I chopped a bunch of things oh, to make good. smoothies, I uh, made some simple syrup to put in cocktails, and I'm uh, thrilled. So, you can buy fruit on fruit stands. <laughs> it's really good. Support those people. Anyways, keep it high and tight, and you bet I'm coming up in May. Wait, we're laughing because you know you've done the same Fuck fucking yeah. thing. Hell yeah, I bought plenty of shit off the side of the road. But, but do you realize what I just did for the first time that was so rad? You know those Mexican dudes in LA that have the carts and they yeah. have all those dope ass fruits like papaya. There's a guy on my corner. Every, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Every day I can go out and get it for you. I'll do a little video. It's the best. 
so he sells mango, that fruit cup with the what's the uh, the fucking ta- tahini is that how you say yes, it? yes yeah. bro i don't know any of that I'm, i didn't know that's how i got here well so for fucking my whole life in the city i've seen people eat this shit and i've been like god that looks so good like what she's describing i've been like mm, let's try some of that fruit and i just never have until like a few months ago there was one of those guys at my kid's soccer thing and i was like i'm fucking here for it bro it's the best thing i've ever had and i'm so mad that it took me this long that long yeah you know what they would sell in baltimore in the street hmm. there was this area right near security boulevard by the security mall and it was <laughs> security mm-hmm. and okay. they would have it's where as a matter of fact it's exactly where interstate 70 <laughs> you can look at it begins or ends right there in maryland okay that's where you either drive it to all the way or you get off, but Let's look see. up, look up Security Boulevard, um, Muslim Bean Pie. <laughs> look up this. Oh, I know you're talking about. These guys would walk the streets they have them and in sell bean pies in traffic. Yeah, yeah, you don't see that out here. No, but and the Oakland Airport has a Muslim Bean Pie booth. Yeah, there they are. The shit's so good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> shit's off the chain. <laughs> you guys out here selling fruit and shit. We're buying bean pies off yeah. the street right there. He is. Shit's good too. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a lot of shit. I bought the best bed, some of the best bed sheets I've ever had. I bought at a gas station, at a gas station parking lot. I swear yeah. to God, they were great sheets. Yeah, great I bought sheets. some sheets too at a gas mm-hmm. station. One time I bought. <laughs> I didn't go for the velvet paintings over there in the corner of okay. Rocky and Bruce Lee, but I did get your bed sheet. <laughs> I was just going to say that uh, there was a time where I had no money, but there was a place on the street selling these ridiculous paintings that it, you click the button on and then it would move like a waterfall. Like you have them in like <laughs> yeah, Chinese remember, salons and shit. Bro, bro, I remember like I had no money at the time and I was like, Tom, I spent $40 on one of these and it was just like a waterfall and it moved. Like, God damn, I wish I fucking had it now. It was so good. We had it in our apartment for a while. I think it broke. John Goodman's made it through every, Goodman. every move. He's made it through so, every move. With for him. those of you who don't know, um, I have a framed headshot of John Goodman in your toilet, in, in my toilet, yeah. and it's been with me since two thousand six, since Tom and I started. It was on Carondelet. It was on Carondelet, yeah. And then we now Tom and I bring John to every shitter in our in our home, and he sits yeah. there and he says hello when you take a shit. It's awesome. And his his smile is just like he's just so happy mm-hmm. to see you. He's like, come to shit, buddy. Shit. You gonna take shit? Let me look at this. Will you Google John Goodman so I can just see? You come to take a shit, buddy? You come to shit? Just a piss? Either way. There he is. He's smiling in my bathroom. Yeah, he's he's younger. He's Roseanne John Goodman. Yeah, Roseanne era. He was such a cutie pie. What a talented guy. Mm -hmm. There he is. God, I love him. And I love Roseanne too. Love them. Good people. Anyways, anything else? What are you plugging? The, The honeydew. Do the Patreon. The YouTube. The Subscribe, RyanSickler.com. That's it. Go there. My dates will be coming. We'll do some fall dates and get out there and go. I'm sure I'll add some stuff in the summer, hopefully. Yeah. And you know what I always think about you is when the K K commercial, every kiss begins it's with K's. And we would put the S on the end. Every kiss begins with K's. <laughs> This is a very musical episode. Yeah. It might be our most musical ever, Christina. <laughs> Wait, but why did you guys start doing that? Because you and Tom, it's been a joke for it's like from Cut f- Man. 15 years. Oh. It's, it's from Cut Man. We had, uh, we, he's like, um, he was talking about something. And he goes, every kiss begins with K's. He was talking about getting a rig and he sang it to like himself. He was like, you know, K's. You're like, every kiss begins with K's. K's. And then we were like, K's. We put an S on everything. Oh, Jim's Deli. Yes. Put an S on Jim's. Jim's. <laughs> Tony Hinchcliffe's father has a restaurant mm-hmm. called Joey. Yeah. No Joey's, just Joey. I want to eat there too. So do I. Yeah. Well, there's another one I always think of you. Joey. Um, one hand washes the other. Oh, you yeah. your latex with the gloves glove on, on. rings over it. Yeah. God. I want to do a cup man too. I told Tom, like we had this oh, whole should. premise where we were ahead of our time. We had a whole premise you guys where were. our fucking fighters we get suspended we get and then all of a sudden we f- see an mma guy and we're like what the fuck's this shit <laughs> and he's like oh you can 
you, we're like, you can elbow them in the head. You can bleed in their face. And then <laughs> we go from the bottom of boxing to immediately the top of the UFC because we've been doing that shit for years. I love it. We've been doing that shit for years. We go right to the top. Look at you two. And, uh, and, uh, and then Conor McGregor and fucking Floyd Mayweather fight. I was like, Tom, I told you. We could have done that. Look at you guys. Do's or do. Do's or do. Do's. Do's yeah, or do. Everything. But wait, now in our defense, that was on the wall yes, in there. They that's real. paid it. That is real. Do's or do is real. We didn't steal that. <laughs> Look, there you are. And my favorite part of Cut Man, too, is when you're feeding. Were you feeding chicken? To chicken? I said to Tom, like, you should just. And he's over there giving chickens. People were so mad about that. Apparently, that's not good. <laughs> He's just sitting there talking about this because I ain't no bitch. And he's throwing fucking chicken. You want to go be a bitch? Go be a bitch. And he's throwing chicken to the chicken. Where can, can people watch Cut Man nowadays? It's online. It's on my YouTube. Yeah, go to oh my YouTube my channel. Gosh. It's on there. All the episodes are on there. So we originally shot a pilot for it. And then we had some heat to um, there was a slam dance media group that was like, hey, we sift through everything that goes to Sundance and Slam Dance and and we look for things that are pilot ready and we love we think this is the best one of the best things in the last few years. Oh, it was so funny. And then we had all that momentum and then the writer strike hit and then all those people yeah. went away and it killed everything. And um, so what we ended up doing, we sold it to um, Comedy Central and they put it on Adam TV and we I remember broke that. them up. We broke it up into like 10 little episodes or something yeah. like so there's little webisodes and this is it's SD before we did that. A, we did it long time ago now, 2005, six, somewhere in there. I just started dating Tom. Was we it? just yeah. started dating. So then, what like, is that? Two thousand six. Two thousand five. Five. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna make this short with my friend Ryan. We rented cameras, and we. Did, I was like, damn, you guys are awesome. We had a whole crew. These bot. These guys let us come. Imagine letting people come in here and shoot and be like, lock up when you're done. That's what. They, well, they're all damaged, but that's what they fucking <laughs> did. They're crazy. We should make it now. We'll find a way to make cut man the movie. I'll put now. money in. Though. Let's do it. Hey, if Kreischer can do the machine. Come on, we could do cut man. So we have. We yeah. already have a script written for it. We have a full feature length script that's ready to go. Well, then here you go. If you're listening and you want to make Cut Man, you know who to fucking reach out to. Let's do it. It'd be Sickler. so much fucking fun. Yeah. So much fun. Well, I'm so, uh, just I love like you. This. Yeah. It, easy. Just easy, right? To work yeah. with people you've known for a million years. And I mean, look at this. This hour and a half has gone by. It feels flown. like five fucking minutes. Flown. I love you so I much. I too. really do. You, you know, I want to say this because especially being a woman in comedy with everything we've seen go on in comedy for <laughs> women the last 20 years from, no. you know, all the bullshit you have to put up with. And I, yeah. you've told me about dudes you've called out that I know, and I am still not friendly with them because of that kind oh, of good. shit. Like no, you've, I just feel like as a woman in this business, especially a beautiful woman, you oh, are already in a hole, extra hole because guys are like, Oh, this chick's funny or pretty. So she's probably not that funny. And yeah. women are like, who the fuck's this? pretty bitch thing she is yeah, so you yeah. you got to fight so hard just to get the zero and then from there show them that you can do this you mean it's not a point of personal privilege point that i'm a white privilege. cisgender uh, <laughs> listen if you're a white cisgender please go by chris just go by chris i can't have christine or christina i still by the way i still love that i called joey diaz on the way here and left christine. him a voicemail I told him i was doing christine's podcast <laughs> never change never 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 let, never tell Joey that my name is Christina. <laughs> I won't. I called you Christine, so it reinforces That's that. what we're all doing. We're all going to do that until the end of time. Christine. I dropped my seeds too, girl. I dropped my seeds. <laughs> so thank you so much for looking out. I love you, dude. We're in it. Hey. Hey, listen. Forever, Like homie. I said when I came over, we survived a motherfucking pandemic. We did, bro. We've survived comedy for 20 fucking years. We've survived this thing called life. I we're know. still here. We're still throwing uppercuts and elbows. That's right. I'm That's very what's proud up. of you guys. Proud of you too, homie. You guys changed the game. You've changed the game. Yeah. Christina. All right, I'll take it. You're, you guys are one of the tiny juggernauts of pocket. Look, I want to say this wild. too, because I read this article recently that said 1% of podcasts, regardless of you know comedy, social, or uh, political, whatever, um, gar regardless of subject, get 50,000 or more downloads. Okay, mm. think about that. 1%? 1%. And then 1% of that is or are the juggernauts, like you guys. Wow. So We're it's, in a, you're in. But you're now in juggernaut territory. You're, you're in the sphere. I'm getting up there. You're there. I'm up there, but I'm getting you're there. up there. But it's you guys. Isn't that wild? You're there. Yeah, I mean, to take. 
Can, I, can one thing, let me just say one thing and we'll Talk get out of night. here. This whole thing, like, I, I know it's um, the point of personal privilege where everybody's like, privilege. you're a woman, you're cisgender, and I'm an immigrant. Like, to lead with these monikers, uh, you know, which is like the trend right now. Like, I listen to other podcasts and kid, younger people now are leading every story with like, I was... I was a privileged, you know, I was an immigrant. I am a ba 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 da da da. And I'm like, does any, <laughs> yeah, there's advantages obviously to everybody's life and disadvantages. But at the end of the day, I think it is hard work and fuck yeah. And, and <laughs> overcoming your personal story. It's like not. I also don't think, I, I, don't, I don't know if I should tell the story or not. I'll be careful. I'll say it without saying names, but I think that our trauma and instead of just curling up in a ball and becoming a junkie or an a whatever, killing or whatever it was, the fight through that, yeah, it just it makes you almost bulletproof for this fucking industry. This is nothing. I mean, this for the things these people said to me, like, oh, you don't like that joke? Oh, okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're not gonna beat me when I get home tonight. I don't oh, give we're a fuck. good. I don't give a fuck. But, yeah, but but also I was never limited by I'm a female. There's only so many women. I should, you know, you're whatever, you're whatever. I was never limited by those descriptors of me. So I feel like pointing out constantly that someone so and so is a this and a this and this. Are we not reinforcing your meekness, your weaknesses? Yeah. Instead How many of going, bitch ass guys have you met in this business? Fucking a, a lot. A shitload of them. Yeah. Okay, so to me, you were always like the homie. You were always OG. You were always, but you came from some shit. Like when I would have real conversations yeah, yeah. with you back in the day, I'm like, Christine is not some fucking, you know, point of personal privilege person <laughs> or anything. Like uh, you're point real. Point of privilege. <laughs> You've been through real God, shit so and you dealt with it. You dealt yeah, with yeah. it. But so have you. But that's, that's what I'm saying. The lesson is not like your labels, your white male cisgender da 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 it's like what you've overcome and your resilience and your determination to be like fuck that shit dude i'm not doing this it's who story. you are not what you are yeah i want i want to be a good person i don't yeah. give a fuck what you call like i want you to be happy i want you to be if you're trans go do it if you're yes, gay go course. do it if you're you know but shut the fuck up about it a little bit you know we all don't need to know everything about your personal business i know it's your personal business i was always taught that shut up about your business I, i'm not out there making out in the street with a, a woman because i'm like i'm gonna start yelling like we need to normalize heterosexuality like no it just we do it we don't go around but can you imagine if i went to every party from now on and go i'm heterosexual i'd like you to make sure that you refer to me and every time we talk please please point out the fact that I'm heterosexual. I just want to normalize it. I just want to normalize it. Like I'm all in support of everything that everyone to do. But, and a lot of these people think it's like new to like David Bowie was androgynous. Oh, right. How long Fuck ago? You. Like you ain't doing anything new. They just Yo. didn't have TikTok. David Bowie didn't have TikTok. He had music. That's what's up. I listened to fucking uh, that song laid by James. He's talking about messing around with gender roles. Yeah. Like none of this shit's new. Or even was that guy <clears> on the <throat> fucking piano? He was wearing makeup. Not Chuck Berry. No. Elton John. Elton nah, John. The black guy. Say. Famous, famous. Tutti Frutti. Oh, Little Richard. Little yeah. fucking Fuck Richard. Yeah. You don't think he was playing of with course. gender and... Look at Prince. Prince. Prince was the one of the... In the 80s, he's doing this he shit. He just like, did it. He just he fucking He had a veil it. over his fucking face <laughs> and still banged women, but he didn't come out and tell you like, oh, so this is... Here's everyone. Here's what I like to fuck. Like, that's what... <laughs> why do we all need to know? Listen, y'all need to normalize what I like to fuck, okay? Like, no, we I don't. Know. Keep it to yourself. I know. I also don't know. Yeah, what is this incessant need to, to be out with every right. sexual proclivity? Everything. I don't give a... I don't yeah. want to know what everybody's into. I don't care what you like to fuck. <laughs> Are you fucking kids or animals? No. Have at it. Ha is it consensual? Have at it. Go fuck as many people, whatever you want. What did you say? Go fuck stuff. Go fuck stuff, man. <laughs> you don't need to tell us about it. Just go fuck stuff. I know. I was listening to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up about it. Like my... um. <laughs> I was listening to this podcast about a guy who's an adult baby diaper wearer. And I was like, yes, this is the podcast I've needed. This is what I love. I love outliers. I love weirdos. Mm -hmm. And his whole, yeah, the whole thing is like, I just want to be, I just want to feel I'm accepted. And like, you're not going to be. Go find the I'm community sorry. to do that. That's right. So, so the go, go find that. Yes. So or he did. build that. But that's what he did. Oh, is that good he found him. other people. Good for him. He sold he, it out. He's he happier quit. than a pig and shit. <laughs> and by the way, I'm jealous because... 
he's so fucking excited about diaper wearing. I mean, the guy, it's like he found his meaning in life. I'm like, I wish I were excited about anything that, in life that he's so excited about these diapers. And he did, he found other people. But it's like, if you want everybody to fucking high five you for this, good luck, sweetie. Good luck. That's not going to happen. Good luck. You're not hey, going to get Support you. Good luck out there. <laughs> good luck out there. Go fuck whatever you want. We don't need to know about it. We don't need <laughs> to know right. about it. We don't even, my father used to say the same thing. We don't, nobody needs to know. Come on, come on. Who fucking gives a shit? But Who that cares? was in relation to gay pride. <laughs> <laughs> You know, how, you know how fucking angry older guys get about gay get pride quiet parades. About me. You know, just, uh, yeah, I mean, come on, but I don't need the fucking parade for this gay shit. I mean, come on, for come this on. Gay they fucking shit. each other. I get it. Okay, oh, I come get. On. It. Come on, we don't have a straight parade. And like that's because we're the majority. Every don't parade's don't a straight. parade. Every straight and the yeah. gay parade. Yeah. I mean, every yeah. parade's kind of gay. Kind of gay. Honest. Yeah. Every right. parade's kind of gay. <laughs> All right, I love you. You're the greatest. We're going to do it. We're going to keep doing it. I'm coming down to see you guys. I'm coming so up in I'm May. Gonna, yeah, you are. I'm coming up in May and make a weekend out of it down I in Texas. I love it. I love it. All right. Until next time, thank you so much for being here. Ryan thank Sickler at The Honey Do. Check him out. If you haven't already, it's a great podcast. Ryan's a great comedian. And until next time, stay cool, moms. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at. Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at. Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at. Where my mom's at. Christina P.